Welcome to Balderdash Academy. I'm your headmaster, Bob LeBlanc. Joining me, as always, is our faculty coach of the Balderdash Academy Dashers, Coach Steve Corning. Let's go, Dashers. Head of Home Ec and Wellness, Professor Marie Stewart Harmon. Hello, everybody. Head of STEAM for Balderdash Academy, Professor Nate Green. Aloha. <laughs> And once again, our reigning champion, head of English language arts, Professor Molly McGill. I wow. am so happy to be here. I'll give so you one sitting ovation. <laughs> <laughs> our visiting professor today is Jason Tardy. Variety entertainers appeared on America's Got Talent, the CBS is the early show, Inside Edition, and CBS Sunday Morning. Uh, at the Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas, the Golden Phoenix Casino in Reno, even three times at the White House. Jason, welcome to Balderdash Academy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! So Jason has agreed to be the scorekeeper tonight while our faculty members compete for the coveted reigning champion banner. They will perform a series of challenges, and at the end of each challenge, Jason will assign points to the competitor he feels is most worthy. He is not looking for the correct answer. He's probably Thank not going to get it here either, but <laughs> <laughs> he's looking for the best answer. The points are arbitrary and can be rewarded to anyone for any reason. At the end of the show, the faculty member with the highest point total will be named the reigning champion. Our current reigning champion is... Professor Molly McGill. Has everyone won uh, a game so far, Headmaster? Uh, everybody has won a game so far. Sweet. Well. Wow. And that sounds means that it is now time for a pop quiz. Our first pop quiz is from Professor Molly McGill of English Language Arts. Champion Molly McGill. What do you got? Okay, I got all kinds of good stuff for you today. <laughs> yes! Pumped! Okay. Why did you so, smell your armpits at the beginning of that? I didn't understand. <laughs> That's the good stuff she's got for us. It was, I was stuff. kissing the, the, oh man. We'll just kind of, no. I'm wearing parfum. Oh, de Molly. <laughs> okay, moving on. Ahem, for me smelling my armpits. Um, faculty, as we do, we are going to kick this off with a pop quiz for the word of the day. I'm going to give you a word. You're going to tell me what you think it means. Hopefully, you've studied your vocab words. And remember, Jason, we're going to take a listen to them and find out which ones we want to award points to. I say we, but it's really you. Today's <laughs> word say. of the day is Kaling. Kaling. Today's word of the day is Kaling. I know. I, I do think I know this. This, um, I was actually at a nail salon for the first time in many, many months. Everybody was wearing masks. Don't worry. And um, the nice lady there was like, oh, do you want the Kaling? And I was like, I, I have never heard of this before. What is this? And it is a specific mani-pedi combination that Mindy Kaling coined. Yeah. And it has now become, it is all over the world. It is exclusively a burgundy red, except for the, the ring fingers. And they are a matching gold or silver, depending on the holiday. And it is coined because it was Mindy Kaling's signature nail style. Which makes sense because maroon and gold goes so well with brilliant comedy writing. Yes. Okay. All right, so the, the Mindy means. Manny, Mindy <laughs> Manny from Marie. Nate, what do you got? Uh, so it's actually, um, so there's these these formations in uh, typically in tropical places called K's. Uh, and what they are, they're like, they're low banks or coral reefs. Uh, and those are uh, being endangered. So what they have now, because there's so many... Uh, things going on around them and putting them in jeopardy. They have uh, a new job, which is kaling, and it's creating artificial Ks uh, in those tropical islands. Um, and that's and uh, that's that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Saving the world one artificial plant species at a time. Yep. Bob. <laughs> Robot fish. So, 
you know, everybody knows what kerning is. Kerning is the space between two letters in a word. It's incredibly important. It can help make a, a word more readable, more understandable. Uh, it can, uh, can save you from embarrassment with some words. Kaling is uh, very similar, except what kaling is, is the space between the body of an I and the dot. It is very specific. And what you can do is you can adjust that kaling to move the X side of that letter higher or lower, depending on what feel graphically you want to do. That's what kaling is. All right. You know, graphically. Is that what you said? Yeah. All right. I like that. Wow. The X height of a dot. Okay, Steve. Um, I'm here to tell you about kaling, obviously. Um, now, kaling is a new fad lifestyle. Um, a lot of people are desperate to lose weight and, uh, you know, muscle up a little bit. Uh, so what you do is you hire a coach. That coach brings you out into the dead center of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and they leave you there with uh, nothing but a tiny sailboat and uh, three uh, barrels of kale. Um, and by the time you oh. make it back to shore, you will be extremely, extremely skinny. So check it out. Kaling. Okay. New fad. I get it. The newest diet fad stranded in the ocean. <laughs> Sorry, it's a lifestyle kale. fad. <laughs> oh, lifestyle fad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jason, we have, uh, the Mindy Manny from yes. nice. Murray. We have, uh, the artificial, uh, cave reef, like reef, reef, saving yeah. endangered species from Nate. We have the X height of the dot of an eye from Bob, and we have the new lifestyle <laughs> fad of eating kale while swimming the Atlantic. Wow. Sailing, but you know, so, it's okay. So as, so as much as I hate to give Steve so many points, I, I, I love this idea. Um, and I really, <laughs> I really hope that this is the answer. I don't think it is. But I'm gonna give Steve five points. Ooh, points. five. That, that was good. There was so much detail and um, I don't know, something about that just hit me just right. Um, I also really, I really appreciate, I'm gonna give some extra points to Marie uh, because the Mindy Kaling thing, that was just great. That you thought of that and um, that was really good. So I'm gonna give you three points on that. Thank you. And she's brilliant. She's really great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And um, it, I don't have to give points to everybody. Right? No, you yeah. don't. No, you don't. I'll just tick maybe one or two per round, whatever I feel like. Let, yeah, whatever you feel like. <laughs> it is your call. Nate, yours was great, too. <laughs> <laughs> you disappoint yet again. But also, uh, I'm inspired. And of course, Jason has a new lifestyle fad that he wants to do. So uh, what Kaling actually means is, Jason, it's something that I thought that you could incorporate into your show. Mm. Okay, so Kaling is a Halloween trick, but I mean, we could do it on a different day. Halloween trick, which involves sending a blindfolded person to a garden to pick a cabbage. <laughs> right. Sounds like fun. Okay. Crowd pleaser. <laughs> yeah. So wait, this does relate to kale then. I'm guessing the name is related to actual kale. Leafy yeah, roughage for leafy sure. Leafy greens. <laughs> Steve was pretty damn close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So our first game is called Four Questions. In honor of today's visiting professor's work in the circus arts, today's four questions are about juggling. Now, I understand that Coach is a juggler, but I assure don't, you don't tell that gives him no <laughs> advantage <laughs> at all in this game. Whichever one of our faculty members gives the best answer, again, not the correct one, but the best, Jason will award points our first question. According to the fact site, the earliest known depiction of juggling appears where? Steve, what do you got? Uh, the, the, the Kama Sutra. <laughs> Kama Sutra. Kama Sutra. All right. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Marie, what do you have? Um, it's actually the New Testament, uh, the New Testament of the, the Bible. There is no indication of it in the Old Testament, but throughout it is it is throughout the New Testament, and that is the first time you see it. All right, Nate, what's your answer? Steve was close um, in, with his Kama Sutra, um, but it actually was forbidden to be uh, 
to be graphically depicted. Uh, so the first time they did it, they actually hit it on the back of a Campbell soup can label. So not yeah. Kama Sutra, but Campbell soup can. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Campbell Supra? Yes. <laughs> All right, Molly, what do you have? Uh, it was actually depicted on the back of a gentleman named Bart, who was a traveling vagabond, uh, and uh, it was tattooed right between the collarbones, right there, and uh, people were like, what's that, Bart? And he was like, check this out, and juggling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Jason, we have Steve with a Kama Sutra, Marie with a New Testament, Nate on the back of a Campbell soup can, and Molly on the back of Bart, the traveling vagabond. Mm. How would you like to score that? Well, you guys, this is great. Um, I think I actually know the answer to this question, by the way. Um, Let me, but I'm gonna... well, what would you think it would be? <laughs> well, I know the real answer is uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Painted on the walls of an Egyptian tomb for an unknown prince dating back about 4,000 years. Yeah, that's right. I almost said that. Wow. <laughs> that's right. But, uh, but, but I'm going to give points to Nate because you know, even though it was ridiculous, which was great, um, I love the fact that he somehow played off of Steve's Kama Sutra thing and turned <laughs> Kama Sutra into Campbell Soup, which is just <laughs> not easy to do. Yeah, I, I know that's not easy. So I'm going to give four points to Nate on this round. I was very confused four points as to a know. child when I was made Campbell yeah. Soup. <laughs> well, both the both the Kama Sutra and Campbell Soup have the same tagline. Mmm, mmm, good. So <laughs> I thought it was going to be. I thought it was. You're just going to get <laughs> load of sodium. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a. Creamy reference. Yeah, that would have been better. Oh, <laughs> wow, creamy, this yeah. is going downhill fast. <laughs> One way or another, everything tastes like cream of mushroom soup. So yes, it's, it protein. it's protein. It's <laughs> protein. Our next question. Written over 2,300 years ago, the Chinese book of Lai Zi describes a warrior juggling what? Marie, what do you have? Uh, it's human hearts, headmaster. Um, as a warrior, they have to prove to their fellow warriors that they are the strongest warrior, and by doing so, they remove the hearts of their victims, and then they entertain their friends. Who doesn't? Right? Nate, what do you have? What's your answer? Uh, it was, That was uh, actually kind of not a misnomer, but not, not, not completely the truth, because it was an optical illusion. What they were doing is they were using yo-yos, and they would always come back, so it looked like they were juggling... Um, but they weren't because it was on the string, uh, and the yo-yo was initially used in, in Warcraft as a weapon, so, um, that's what they were doing. It all makes sense. Molly, what do you have? Well, everyone knows a warrior juggles rabid wolves, because if mm. you can't tackle, manage, and juggle a rabid wolf, are you even a warrior? And going into battle, juggling rabid wolves... Intimidation factors through the roof. It's the first thing you learn in Boy Scouts. Yeah, because what if you lose one? Oh, you don't yeah. want to lose one. <laughs> Unless it's a strategic right. defensive mechanism. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Steve, what do you have? Um, again, I don't know this one, but here's my guess. I think he was juggling a hammer, um, a saw, and uh, one of his own children. Uh, and uh, incidentally, he was also the first person to uh, juggle work and family. <laughs> <laughs> you were so uh, And the last one to do it successfully. Um, so the actual answers was seven swords at once. What? <laughs> what? Jason, you have Marie <laughs> with human hearts. You have Molly, uh, you have Nate with yo-yos, Molly with rabid wolves, and Steve with a look of stunned shock, <laughs> plus balancing work and family. How would you like to score? All right, uh, I'm going to give Steve one point for the, the, the work and family thing, just because that was, he's going to be a great dad someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give uh, 
I'm gonna give Marie three points for the heart juggling. I like that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's good for this round. The the rabbit wolves I really did like and the yo-yos, but I don't know I had something about the uh, the juggling the hearts. Just that was the one that really stood out. So be slippery. That makes sense. It's slippery. <laughs> it's just more challenging, right? So yeah. swords. <laughs> that would be quite the. Seven swords. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I have anxiety thinking about that. <laughs> Cocktail swords. Uh, in the right. 1500s, in the 16th century, jugglers in Ireland were required by law to do what? Nate, what do you have? Well, uh, they were told to keep their balls in their pants, so they had to juggle pins. Um, because they were not allowed to juggle balls. It had to be pins or like a uh, bowling pins, um, standard issue, not, not like New England candle pin. Um, cause. So not only, not only, not even juggling pins, bowling pins. Right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Just like that one. Just like that I one. I didn't have to get up. It was sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> Redundancies! <laughs> and that was because of the, the law, uh, the no balls law. But no balls law. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Molly, what do you have? Um, they had to have a spot of tea halfway through. Um, to really calm their nerves, it can be really, you know, jitter. You give you the jitters up there with stage fright and all. So uh, they were made to drink chamomile tea. To keep us calm. That may keep them calm. That's fine. Yeah, Steve, what do you have? Uh, they were required by law to wear underwear. Um, now, of course, in Ireland at the time, they were wearing a lot of kilts. And these men were juggling so vigorously that their kilts were flopping in the air like uh, Marilyn Monroe. And uh, <laughs> it caused a lot of problems uh, throughout Ireland as uh, women would faint in the streets. Um, so they had to wear underwear. Wear underwear. Marie, what do you have? Um, they were required to vacate the bar. As we know, the Irish take their pubs very seriously, and they found that with all of the flying pins and balls, there was some some missed, some spilled drinks, and they that, that was unacceptable. So all jugglers were required to step outside the pub to do their to do their act if they had to get it out of their system before they were allowed to turn return to their pint. That makes sense. And we have a lot of great answers. Uh, one was pretty pretty close, actually, and that was Marie. What they had to do was pay compensation to any audience members hurt by juggling accidents. <laughs> That's huh. smart. That's really smart. So by law, they basically needed <laughs> they liability. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's, so, <laughs> that's liability they were insurance. able to pay in Oreos, though. <laughs> <laughs> so... Jason, due to the no ball law, uh, the jugglers not being able to use their balls because they had to keep them in their pants, we have bowling pins from Nate T halfway through from Molly, underwear from Steve, and vacate the bar from Marie. How would you like to score? All right. Uh, I'm going to give Steve two points just for the visual. Um, and then <laughs> Nate is going to get five points for the keep your balls in your pants. <laughs> there we go. They got the no balls peace prize. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. What is wrong with me tonight? I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty good, actually. <laughs> I love so, that. <laughs> our <sighs> last question. So in 1885, the Murdoch brothers were recorded as the first ever duo to do what? Molly, what do you have? Oh, uh, tons of stuff. Uh, they were required to invite their mother-in-laws to all of their shows. They were the first to uh, invite their in-laws. Yep. All right, that's a great answer. Steve, what's your answer? Um, <laughs> can you repeat the question real quick? Sorry. In 1885... Uh -huh. <laughs> In 1885, mm -hmm. the Murdoch like brothers like improv stalling. Mm -hmm. Yep, the Murdoch brothers were recorded as the first ever duo to do what? Um, this was the first time in history that anyone accidentally juggled. Uh, they did not intend to juggle. Uh, in fact, they were hoping to murder one another with large knives. Uh, instead, they both were extremely good at catching and throwing. So the ultimate blocker. Marie, what do you have? 
Um, these brothers were the very first to also marry sisters who juggle. So mm. it became a whole juggling family. You got your, your brother-in-law and your husband, and they're both jugglers, and your sister-in-law and your wife, and then they're jugglers, and then they just like go on a juggling tour of the world in 1885. <laughs> Which makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. world-traveling, juggling, married duo. Nate, what do you have? Well, it happened, I believe, in November of uh, 1885. They were the first people to... Um, juggle inside of a car. Uh, they happened to stumble upon a DeLorean in a blacksmith's uh, barn. And um, they started, they didn't know what it was, so they started juggling. Um, and I, they went down in the history books. Um, and that's how they did it. And they found an almanac too, but that they didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> who, who, who does, right? So... Um, you were all close and all obviously not listening because <laughs> I did tell you right at the beginning. Behind the scenes flashback. Based on the interview that we had with Jason, this is something that that uh, you had to look into as well. And that is uh, the first two person club passing duo, right? This has been a Balderdash Academy flashback. That they were the first two-person club passing duo. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, juggling like... four. I just wanted to see if anybody was listening. Uh, <laughs> juggling four clubs between them while standing on pedestals. So, Jason, we That's have close. invite the in-laws from Molly. We have accidentally juggled. They tried to commit murder and were just really good at blocking from Steve. <laughs> Marie with uh, married sisters who also juggled, and Nate. By juggling inside of a time traveling DeLorean. <laughs> um, apparently, this took place out in California in 1885. Yeah, uh, what is it? Lone Pines now, after it drove through one, the Lone yeah, Pines yeah. Ranch? Jason, what's your? Uh, how would you like to score? All right, uh, so Nate gets a point for the Back to the Future reference. Awesome. Uh, and then this is a little different. I'm going to give Molly three points for her commitment to that amazingly that answer. <laughs> I'll take the pity points. I will take the pity points. <laughs> no pity. It really was. I was like, wow, she's really. She's. I, I don't think I could have stuck with it that long, but she. She was committed. I appreciated that. So uh. I'll give her three points for that. All right. She's the real deal. Okay, so that's good because that actually just put Molly on the board. Yep, it did. <laughs> Don't think I didn't notice. Yes. I thought you got points yeah. earlier on. Sorry. Nope, sure didn't. Our, sc our scores are <laughs> <laughs> in last place. We have our working. current reigning champion with three points. Next, we have Marie with six points, Steve with eight, and Nate with ten. <sighs> It's time to check your pets, sit back, relax, and get ready for some dad jokes by Steve, the one guy who isn't a dad, in the next episode of Balderdash Academy. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. You can find us on your favorite podcast service as Balderdash Academy. Go Dashers!